Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, as you all know, my name is Lex, and today I'm just going to be showing you a little bit of how I work on and process, like color grade my images before retouching. So what I do is my typical process is I do the, a bit of color grading and then retouch and then put finishing touches to the colors. Um, the reason I do this is because I want to be able to see what the end result is going to be by the time I'm retouching so that I use that to guide my retouching. So for example, I know a lot of people do their, you know, dodge and burn, but with my process, sometimes I already know how I want the highlights to look and how I want the shadows to look and everything else in between. Um, so yeah, um, this is what I do. The first thing I do generally is I go down to the, just so that I see what the colors actually look like to my lens correction and I remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. What this does is uh, Lightroom identifies the lens you use and tries to make sure it corrects any distortions or vignetting that comes with the lens typically. Yes. So another thing, so I've done that. If I have to adjust anything, I can just do it manually as well. But I just want to, you know, use the typical automatic version, so which is fine for me. Um, there's not I can't I don't see any extremely harsh vignette or distortions in this image. The second thing I'm going to do is you know because I want to know how this image is going to be at the end of the day, I want to crop it so that I can remove the um, part that the background doesn't cover. So I'm just going to crop it, and I also want it to be like a, an Instagram ready image. I see where so the model favor she's amazing she has amazing skin so i mean i may decide not to retouch this image at all but i generally at the end of the day do but just today i'm just focusing on the color grading and so when i've cropped it and think that's nice it's just perfect um the next thing i'm going to do is i want to brighten the image up a little bit because i feel like there's a lot of dark and if you look at the histogram you see that most of the stuff most of the colors almost of the image is in the lower end of the spectrum so I can decide to take the blacks up by just clicking and dragging this and then take some of the shadows up as well by clicking and dragging that so if you if you if you notice closely while I was moving this it was also affecting the highlights and shadow sliders down beneath that's an easier way to move it as well just so that you can get a more balanced image as you will um, I want to increase the highlights. I feel like the highlights are a bit muted in this place So I'm going to move the highlights up just a little bit just to get that punchy highlight Exactly and maybe the whites as well Then what I typically do is I increase my clarity just a little bit if you increase it too much It's going to be too too, you know heavy-handed and like HDR -y and I'm not very excited about it exactly especially when from the beginning I decided I wanted to be a very soft image and I used very soft lighting for it. So then the second thing I'm going to do is to dehaze to add a little extra punch. As you can see, I, it was very, very small values. Clarity just 16, dehaze 5. It's not like those values are necessary every time. And sometimes I go further in the dehaze, depending on what I'm going for. But for right now, because this image is mostly um, under exposed just a little bit, I decided to increase the dehaze just especially because I want to recover some of the details in the highlighted parts. Yes. So I usually like to take my vibrance down a little bit and then increase my vibe um take my saturation down a little bit and increase my vibrance just because I want the color to be more controlled. Yes. So the next thing I'm gonna skip over the tone curve for a bit and focus more on the rest of the of the color so right now i like teal a lot but i wanted i'd rather this image had a bluer feel now if you notice i have not touched the white balance yet i'm still coming back to that but i want to change the teal to blue a little bit so right now i'm just going to pick on this and then move the hue of the teal towards blue as you can see this is what it looks like look like if this is what it looks like right now i'm just so i'm going to show you what be, before and after looks like so you see what we've done so far here we go this is before this is after this is before this is after if you might not notice it but if you look closely you see how the edge around here is moving just a little bit because of the um adjustment that we made 
to the lens um the lens correction yeah so i moved it towards blue now this blue is looking good um i want it just a little bit brighter that's what the luminance is for how bright or how dark you want your tones to be and then i'm going to reduce the saturation just a little bit just so that it's a bit washed and has this whole retro feel if you notice a lot of my images have that um yeah just that retro feel now i also like personally to take down the saturation of dark skin because somehow the image the cameras we use sometimes over um saturate the um, brown skin tone so as a rule i just take it down just a little bit it's still preserving the original colors and tones but it just makes it a bit better and better looking so that's what i'm going for right now um um i i like the tone of her skin i don't think i need to change anything there's no problem with the makeup nothing it's just very clean so i don't need to adjust the hue or anything like that yeah so that said i i like what i'm looking at right now um this is without it this is worth it perfect then the next thing i like to do personally i like to and i know a lot of people have different ways of doing this thing but i like to increase the sharpening general sharpening of the image now sometimes i used to mask to see what i'm sharpening and i hold down the alt key to see what i'm looking at to see what i'm sharpening as i'm going as you can see all the darker places will not be sharpened the brighter places will be sharpened so when i do that i can increase the radius you can see the parts that are sharpened and yeah that's it just to kind of get in more details of that yes so yeah and then i don't think i really need noise reduction but just to be safe because it's a low um low exposure image i'm just going to increase just take it up a little bit and that is to the to a huge extent what I do most of the time. Um, now to add a little bit of flair, I'm now going to go back to the white balance, and I want to make the white dress white. And it's it's very simple to do that. You can just come and click on a neutral, on not extremely exposed, not extremely dark, but it's just a neutral part of it. And once you do that, it kind of affects the entire image. Now, if you notice, it has affected the tone of my blue. It has affected the tone of the skin. So I can decide right now, the skin looks a bit purple or has a lot more magenta in it. So I can come and just ease it out by coming to the oranges here and like warming it up a little bit, taking it towards orange. And yeah, I think it's a bit preferable. Um, also, um, I can come back here and adjust that a little bit more just so that it doesn't have too much of that um, magenta tone and yeah that's it um, I can okay so right now it doesn't still look great so I'm just going to adjust it a little bit more to have a bit warmer feel same thing for here as well so I think about here is perfect um, I'll come back to here and I just take that down a little bit yeah i like what it looks like right now that's it um then yes for the turn curve so that so if i now want to go and create something that is a bit more you know um dramatic with the tones and all these things i can decide to use the tone curve and the color grading panel on the new um lightroom so i am for example say i want to add some first of all okay i think i'll use the turn curve and show what it works how it works so maybe just add a little bit of contrast to it or you know reduce the contrast a little bit so i'm going to add a little i kind of like what it looked like and um, take the mid tones up just a little bit just so it has that you know soft and slightly punchy feel yeah and then i'm going to reduce the extreme highlights just a little bit see what that that, that did to the brightest parts of the image just so the image is generally all together you know soft and nothing is taking your attention away from the model's face and like the general image yeah so that's it um i can decide that i want to add some warmth to the shadows using the turn curve um just a little bit oh, it's a bit too much yeah something there is perfect this is what it looks like without it this is what it looks like with it it's just adding a little bit of color a little bit of you know tones to the to the mid tones and the highlights and all those things and these tiny tiny changes like these 
that kind of make for a really beautiful adorable uh, lovely image yeah. so yeah um you can add a bit of blue or you can add a little bit of yellow depending on what I, you're going for um, sometimes i like to even it out by adding some reds to balance out the blues and yellows you know just everything to make everything soft and smooth and i think i am fine with this so again this is what before and after looks like um i hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial um the um yeah um i really like it i hope you do as well um if you have any questions you can ask in the comments below if you want me to address something else you can also ask so like in my future videos i can share more about my process this is again is what it looks like before and after um yeah and i'm excited about this then from here i just go and retouch and then i'm very good so go hope you enjoyed this short tutorial um till next time it's your boy lexash